This is when they hijack the show and you don't know what's going on. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is when they, they do behind the scenes something else that's unrehearsed, unplanned. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday to Pastor Andre. Come on, everyone. Happy birthday. We want a thousand hashtags. Happy birthday. <laughs> Come on, eat those buttons now. Uh, happy oh, birthday. Wow, wow, happy wow. Birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, so we just want to say, yeah. on behalf of everyone, <laughs> happy birthday, Pastor Andre, and I think across the whole world, yes. everybody just want to celebrate. The greatest gift is life. Yes. Yeah. And God has given another year, and we believe that the next year will be a year of full of grace and favor, a new mantle to rest upon you, and influence to come upon your life like never before. Amen. And so we just release the blessing of God upon you, and all your viewers and all your partners, they just want to say happy birthday. Yes. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Thank Amen. you, thank you, thank you. And um, are we ready to get on with the show now? <laughs> well, I don't even need to do that. <laughs> I, I don't know who's in charge over here because, <laughs> because um, I'm ready to, to, to have a party here. Are we ready to praise the Lord? Not yet. Are we? <laughs> are we ready? <laughs> oh, no. It's a okay. We've got to keep talking. Okay, we've got to... We we got to uh, keep talking, they say. So I, I don't know. This is what we call an unorganized this program. This is when you, when you are caught off guard. Who? Totally you. No, I'm not caught off guard. I just don't know what's happening. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's so like whoever right knows what's happening, happen it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glory. Glory. Yeah, great to, great to be together today. <laughs> well, yeah, here's the thing. I'm officially 51 today. Mm. Yes. Can you believe that? All right, 51 Good today. Age. You know, Andre, one thing that I've seen in the, these, I mean, I don't work with you every day and, you know, we don't, we haven't seen you every day, but the last 72 days, I've never seen a man that's so consistent mm. in his walk, yes, firstly with God and then wisdom. You know, I was thinking of yesterday and I thought, what, what is it that if somebody had to ask me, what would you like from Andre? And that's your wisdom. The way you operate in the power, it's the power of wisdom. I have, I, we have, have a lot of friends and, you know, in ministry and how they think. But you, I want to say that, you know, you excel them all, honestly. The way you think on like moments Incredible. just comes and, you know, it's, it's powerful. It's, it's absolutely the, the, the power of wisdom that Solomon carried. And that's what I see upon your life. And I appreciate that from you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Gab, what's happening? Can we roll the program now? Are we good? Okay, Jenny. Okay, I'm pitching to you, they say. So they're telling me what to do. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so uh, apparently we have something. I was told not to be involved in this. <laughs> so apparently there's something special for us all to enjoy together to celebrate my husband. It's coming across very soon, and we can't wait for you to join us. Happy birthday, boss. Hope you have an awesome day and many, many more. Happy birthday, Uncle Andre. I hope you have a good day. Happy birthday, Andre. Happy birthday, old man. Oh, happy birthday, Andre. Happy birthday, old man. Go play. Ready? 
Feliz cumpleaños, Andre. I don't know. Happy birthday, Andre. We love you. We're so uh, glad to be part of the family here. And I uh, hope you have an awesome day. We celebrate you. We honor you. We bless you. Happy birthday, Pastor Andre. We love you so much. We love being a part of the faith family. And we hope that today is your best birthday yet. Love you. Happy birthday, Uncle Andre, from sunny South Africa. I trust you'll have an awesome day and see you soon. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Andre. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Andre. Happy birthday, Pastor Andre. Happy birthday to you. Hashtag, did you hear? Happy birthday, Andre. Okay. As is technical, we don't talk. We just, we just show, we point. We point to the problem. I mean, to the problem. <laughs> Happy birthday. I hope it's a picture. Happy birthday, Andre. This is a special birthday wish from me. Um, I pray for this new year that you are entering into, that you will count your life by the number of smiles that you have, not by your tears. I pray that you will count your age by the number of friends that you have and not by the years. We have a blessed year ahead of you and I pray that God's favor will rest upon your life and that you will accomplish everything that you set your mind in your heart to. Happy birthday, Dad! The two of us, your two favorite children, the anointed ones of the yeah. family, wanted to jump on you and say happy birthday to you, let you know that we love and appreciate you, and you're 51, which is kind of old. And so. don't worry, though, because you can't see the gray hair because of the receiving lines. Exactly! <laughs> so that is okay. But in all seriousness, we actually want to tell you that we love you so much. We are so thankful for having such an amazing man of God as our father. You've taught us so much and imparted so much wisdom to us. Yes, we really, really love and appreciate you. And we would not be here without you, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, we just wanted to say thank you so much for all the wisdom that you poured into our lives. We really, truly appreciate the man of God that you are and the example that you set for us. We love you so much. And well, yeah. we're behind the camera. Right now. Yeah, have a great birthday, Dad. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday, Dad. I just wanted to say thank you for the impact you've left in my life in this last and only 18 years. And I just wanted to say that you're a fantastic role model. I've seen you have the vision to start these crazy projects. I've seen you have the wisdom to find a plan amongst chaos. And I've had I've seen you have the perseverance to see a plan come to completion. All these are fantastic characteristics of a father. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, that if you raise up a child in the ways that he should go, he will not depart from them when he grows old. And you have taught through examples. So I want to say thank you for who you've been. Thank you for never changing and thank you for never giving up. Thanks, Dad. Love you. 
Well, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It makes no difference where you are watching from. Welcome. Something is happening. Oh, come on, someone get excited. I tell you, it is my good friend, Dr. Andre Raven's birthday today. So let us know where you are wishing Dr. Andre a happy birthday from. yourself an increase mm. okay <laughs> so um you know that was, good, that, that was a good mimic wasn't it, was it? thank Very you thank special. you so much why do you guys just tell me okay that uh, that, that if we tell you we, you'd stop us yeah, yeah but, you know un unfortunately there was a little crash in the system that's why the chaos there was at the a beginning delay. of the yes. of the program the system no decided to crash and uh they wanted to play that so uh, great thank you so much thank you for all the birthday wishes and uh, thank you so much for all of you at home as well, uh, just for wishing us online the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of wishes all over that, um, that we've been sharing with and just uh, appreciating. And it's just been a great, great time. So I'm just so excited. Great to have you with us today. All right. Good day. Wherever you're watching from. Wherever you're watching from. All right. Let us know where you're watching from. We've got a good, good program lineup for you. And uh, we're going to be introducing to you in just a few moments Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. He's going to be with us today live on the program. But we're going to do one big song. So, Matt, come on. Let's kick this program off. Let's get into the flow of what God's got in store for you in your home today as we just praise the Lord together and we're getting straight over to Dr. Rodney who's going to be sharing the word of the Lord with us very, very shortly. Matt, come on, take it away. Oh, I say, oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing Treasures that fade are never enough. Yeah. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. Better than you, Lord, 
I love that song. Love Don't you it. like that song? I love it. Wow. That's Nothing a new song from Elevation. Elevation Church, the Elevation. latest new Elevation. song that's just come out. And uh, you guys do such a great job at that. What a beautiful song. Yeah. Wherever you're watching from, come on, let us know. We are just so excited to have you with us. It's going to be a great program tonight. Yes. I'm telling you, the power of God is going to touch you. It's Pentecost week. We're getting ready for a great Sunday service as well. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be coming to you live from uh, right from here, uh, from the USA as well. It's going to be absolutely awesome. This whole week, Jen, hasn't it been a good week? It's been very special. And you know, the testimonies just don't stop rolling in. The Holy Spirit has really manifested Himself and made Himself so real to every single one of us. Not just here on set, but wherever you're watching from. And it's been all over the world. So we really feel so privileged to be a part of this. But more than anything, we love to hear how God is touching you right there in your homes. And what the enemy intended to be a real horrible time for this whole world, God has proven that His children remain blessed remain free, are constantly walking in His divine healing and provision and protection. And this is our time that we celebrate. Because right. even though darkness comes, the glory, the light of God is far, far brighter, shines far greater than any darkness that could ever be. Yes. So we just want to rejoice with you and thank you for sharing these 72 days. 72? Well, we're us. about to get to that. Day number, Lillian? 72. 72 today. Yeah. All right, day number 72. Uh, We've been going live, and uh, what a great 72 yes. days it's been, Nikki. Yes. You know, every day, every day it's just increased, increased. Yes. Yesterday was so powerful yes. with the presence of Phenomenal. God in the studio. Oh, you know? And we just thank God. If we look back over the 72 days, 
people were healed, delivered, set free, baptized in the Holy Spirit. We just see a move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, a real global homes, outpouring of God. Praise God. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. 72 days. Let us know where you are watching from mm. quickly. Go on to Facebook right now. Come on, tell us some of the cities, some of the towns, uh, some of the places. Jen, we've got testimonies as well that have come in. And come on, share, share with us. What, what have you got there? So we got this from yesterday. It was a pastor, Silas from Kenya. And he said, praise the Lord for the wonderful teachings that I've received from you since I started watching your TV programs on Faith TV. I am blessed with your programs. And listen to this, as a pastor, I feel encouraged so much to stay in the confidence of the person of Jesus Christ with his finished work of the redemption at the cross. Yeah. I feel matured, oh, sorry, not matured, I feel nurtured. I feel nurtured by the person of the Holy Spirit who makes me new every day. I feel I'm being lifted to another level with those teachings. I am from Kenya, East Africa. May blessings, many blessings to you as you all minister to the whole world through the TV programs. That's wonderful. You, you know, there's so many testimonies coming in. We're going to be crossing in a few moments to Dr. Rodney, but uh, I want to read one or two of these before we do. Joyce wrote in and uh, said to us, Good evening, family. God is good all the time. I've been receiving blessings every day. Day. Hallelujah. And when I when 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 I say every day, I mean every day. I am healed. My knees are healed. My arthritis, Pastor Praise Nikki, is God. healed. When you <laughs> prayed for it, I want to take this opportunity to thank every single one of you for what you are doing. Esther wrote this and says, Thank you, Lord. My niece was healed during the praise and worship. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then listen to this one. Grace says, God touched my heart last night and healed me of emotions when Pastor Nikki prayed. Mm -hmm. The truth has set me free. Thank you, Jesus. I love your presence. Hallelujah. Annette says, my 12-year-old son is speaking now in tongues. Thank yes. you, God, for your goodness. That's great. And uh, Marita says this, says, uh, uh, hi there, family. I just want to thank you for the program. It's changed everything around my family. And God has given us such a great testimony. And she says, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Praise all God. All right, so just so excited with what God is doing all over. I, I'm, I'm amazed. You, you know, the number of, of testimonies that are that are coming in from all over, it's just absolutely glorious, isn't it, Lil and Nikki? You know, I absolutely. love the testimonies. Yes. You know, when yes. a word goes out and it touches people's hearts and they get mm. uh, transformed and renewed because the, the word of God said you'll get transformed by the word of God. That's right. And every time, Jenny, yesterday you blessed me. Yeah. You know, if I think of the word that you spoke, you spoke so profoundly in every scripture that you read and the way you unfold it, the revelation that comes out of it. I've heard a lot of word on um, the love of God. It's one of my favorite subjects when somebody preaches about the love of God. Mm. Uh, but yesterday was such a, there was like a set from heaven on God's people to say, I'm going to show you how much I love you. So, and uh, through the word that you preached, it was powerful. phenomenal. I've actually, to be honest with you, from the very first time that we've been watching and being here on the set, yeah. uh, yesterday for the, uh, I listened three times to that message. Sure. Because it was so uh, a fresh word. It was like God just said, here's something for you to eat. Eat it. Just, wow, you wow. know, um, digest it. And it's so powerful when you speak on the love of God. It changes people. Mm. The love of God is the only thing that will touch you, that will change you. Wow. And yesterday, I'm telling you, was one of the top messages I've ever heard you preach. It was, it was glorious yesterday. Was and, and Matt, uh, you know, my mom phoned me early this morning to wish me happy birthday. And uh, she's got a new favorite, Matt. <laughs> you, you, you are my mom's new favorite. Okay, so, 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 so I want you to quickly look into that camera over there. Her name is Hazel. Hazel. And, and just send her. She watches every single night. She's watching right now. So we call her Nana. You can call okay, her okay. Nana. so you can call her Nana. Okay, Nana, thank you. I'm so honored to be your new favorite. And, and I, hope, I hope I don't take the place of your of your son but no <laughs> but I, I, i'm so glad well you, you got half so the inheritance already that's man. right i love tea tea is my new favorite so. <laughs> did you just say that <laughs> oh lovely lovely well, yeah. thank you, thank you, Matt. Oh, and uh, Nana, Nana's watching. Nana's watching. You know, all of South Africa are watching. People yeah. are watching all over, and uh, all, to, over to, all over Africa, all over the UK. 
and, uh, and, and all over America. Yeah, we it's even just got amazing. testimonies yesterday from America as well. Lots of people listening and how, um, how financially they have been blessed over this time. It's just been a great and glorious very, very week. Now, now tonight, I, I want you to get ready. Because tonight, my good friend uh, of many, many years, since 1995, but even before that as a family, God has just uh, used Dr. Rodney Howard Brown in such a powerful way uh, all over the world. Uh, he was instrumental in uh, the 50 days of glory that uh, we broadcast right here on the Faith Broadcasting Network for those 50 days. We traveled with him in Africa for many days as well. We've uh, grown to love uh, him and Adonica in such a wonderful way. And uh, tonight he's going to be with us live on air from his studio in Tampa, Florida. We are linking in with him from his studio to our studio. So I, I want you to take this moment right now and uh, I want you to welcome uh, to the Faith Broadcasting Network and we're going to be talking to him a little bit. Would you put your hands together and come on, give him a big shout out wherever you are. Let's welcome Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, my friend. Yay. Welcome. Great to have you with us tonight. Well, I just want to tell you we love you guys and I want to say happy birthday. I, I saw all the birthday greetings I was watching on the app and uh, what can I say? Out of all the greetings there, I think the ones that stood out for me were your children. Yes. Yeah. That's what speaks more than anything. You can have anybody greet you, wish you birth, happy birthday, but your kids, that's the major thing, you know? <laughs> so uh, they, they kind of salute you more than anybody else can because they live with you and they, and they see you. So, but um, I have a little surprise for you for your birthday. You do? <laughs> I do. I have a little surprise for you for your birthday. So step over here. It's a special for you. Yeah. For you. Go ahead. Get him in the shot. You'll recognize him. Ray! <laughs> Come on, Ray! <laughs> hey, Blackie. The one and only Raymond hey. Sears. Come on, bless Pastor Andre today for his birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday, Pastor Andre. Oh. It's good to be with you, although we're, we're virtual right now. <laughs> you can play the track. Let me sing. <laughs> And I know that you are 
tell you something. Ray, that was out of this world. We love you. We love you. We miss you. All right. We love miss you. you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's and, good uh, to be with you and happy birthday. May it be the greatest birthday you've ever had. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We love you so much. And, and I, I'm telling you right now, my mom's probably in tears. Okay, because not only is her Matt. new favorite Matt singing, but, but now the, the, the old favorite that Ray has always Ray. remained her favorite of all these years. Ray, you still take the cake in my mom's eyes. All right, so um, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for blessing us tonight. Wow. We just send our love to everybody across Africa, and I know we uh, across America and the UK, to let you know that we've been praying for you night and day. Um, and of course, we're coming into this time now, Pentecost, which I um, know many people may probably know the story, which I don't know how much you want me to tell, but um, I will say this, that um, about 10 weeks ago, I had an open vision that was, you know, I, you know me, I've shared many times over the years, I, we talked about people that have seen Jesus or an angel that I never, for whatever reason, never saw anything. I, <laughs> you know, uh, when I was a kid, because I was saved at the age of five and baptized the Holy Spirit when I was eight, and I always wanted to see Jesus and see an angel, you know, I always just say the only angel I see is my wife, you know, Adonica, and the kids when they were sleeping or now the grandbabies when they're awake. And so as a kid that used to always bother me, how come other people see things and I don't, which I actually see things, but I don't see them. I see them inside and they happen just like I see them, but I don't see it in front of me. And so we had just gone back from Australasia. We were, we did a uh, 17 cities inside of three weeks. We hit 10 cities of Australia, we hit New Zealand, Fiji, um, and then uh, Singapore, Papua New Guinea, I mean, Singapore, um, Indonesia, and then the Philippines. And like, as we were traveling, it was like this boom was coming down behind us. And I could see that this thing was gonna hit America flat on. And so uh, we, we got back in and I uh, got hold of the White House and said, the president better go on the front end of this thing because it's gonna hit us like a train smash, you know. So without going too much details, you know, the stuff I have uh, shared over the years about what's going on on the planet and all this kind of stuff. So our church was ready. I bought special machines, secured the building. These machines are medical grade, tested by military, tested by hospitals, and they kill every virus. They even kill coronavirus, believe it or not. And I put it, I totally sanitized the church and stuff like that. And so, the sheriff and I here have been friends. Uh, we did a big event in January, honored the sheriff and whatever. And so he and I were chatting to each other, even the, the week before I got arrested. Um, and he's, you know, he's a friend of mine. 
and uh, I'm actually a deputy sheriff of the county. I mean, he, I got my badge and everything. So, but let me tell you what happened. So I, I, I hit 13 cities across Florida. I actually saw you down in, in, right. in Naples. Right. And yeah. then the last seven cities, we used a helicopter because I knew it was going to go to lockdown. And I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be stuck somewhere across the coast. And I was flying back and forth from my house because I live an hour away in, in the middle of a forest. So by that time, I'm on the phone with pastors and they're locked down in France and other countries and people were crying and I'm on the FaceTime with them. And, uh, and I actually said to them, I said, well, I want you to know how much I love you. And I said, if I don't see you for whatever reason, I'll see you in heaven. And I started getting all excited. I'm going to go to heaven, you know. And then I had to rebuke myself, said, what do you mean? You, you can't get excited now. There's, we've got so much to do here on the earth. But I actually, for the first time, actually contemplated that we're going to go home to be with Jesus. I got very excited and I was weeping and I, I was so happy. I'm going to see Jesus. And then I had to pull myself out of that. So it was like a, uh, it's like a conflict of we're going to go home to be with Jesus, but I've got a job of work to do here. We've got to get more souls saved, that kind of stuff. So people kept asking me, is this the end? You know, is this the end? And I didn't feel it was the end because I felt the Lord had laid plans out for me for, from now to 2029. Normally I get three years ahead, but I announced at last October's ministers conference. I said, the Lord told me and laid the plans out to 2029. So I was sitting like with trying to work out where exactly things were. And, um, you know, some people thought it was the beginning of the tribulation. And I mean, you know, everybody's talking and whatever. So I came back, I flew from the, uh, from Cocoa Beach area with Kennedy Space Center. I landed the house at about one o'clock in the morning. I went upstairs. I was so tired of sleeping like three hours a night. I was on the phone with pastors constantly. And um, I get into bed. And I, was, I, could, I could have dozed off many nights and Donica pulled the phone out of my hand and plugged it in because I was falling asleep. Sometimes I fell asleep talking to people, you know, because I was that tired. And um, so I'm sitting in bed and Tim Hall, everybody knows Evangelist Tim Hall. He's a dear friend of mine, Evangelist, based out of Australia. And uh, he had tried to call me. I was on the platform. So I, I said to him, uh, I'll call you later. So when I saw that he had called me several times, I felt... Let me call him because the time difference 17 hours. And when I woke up, it would be late at night and we would keep missing for another day. So I called him. So now I've got the phone in my left hand. I'm sitting in bed. My wife is sitting the other side of the room. She's busy finishing some stuff up on a computer. And I said, how's it going? He said, well, he said, the stores are empty. He said, it looks like the end of days. And suddenly like that, a tornado of fire came around the bed, the four post of bed. Now I'm thinking, I'm dreaming. This is a dream. I, I, I mean, this is a tornado coming to me. A fire is coming straight at me. I started shaking under the power of God. And, and it came and stopped right. It was about 12 inches high. It wasn't big. It stopped right in front of my stomach. And he said, it looks like the end of days. And as he said that, the fire hit into my stomach. And what it did, I began to groan in the spirit and begin to prophesy which was a diverse tongue interpretation of tongues. And this is what the Lord said, the end is not yet. So I thought I'm going to fall out of bed. I thought I'm in the dream, you know, but this is real. I mean, what do you do when you've got a tornado in front of you? Yeah, you can't yeah. make this stuff up. This is like just after two o'clock in the morning. The Lord said, the end is not yet. I'm sifting my people. I'm separating the wheat from the tares, the profane from what's holy and the false from what is true. And he said, I'm purifying my bride because he said, my church is not ready. And he said, but I'm going to get them ready. He said, because I'm coming back for a glorious church, a church without spot or blemish, a church not with one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom. And then he was overwhelmingly, it was like the Lord showed me how much he loved his church. He said, I love my bride. He told me how much he loved them. He went on and on like he was over the moon about the church. He said, I love them. He said, I love, and he said, they, I'm not coming back where they're weak and defeated and I have to rescue them. I'm coming back for a glorious church on, that is occupying wow. till I come, wow. that's seeing the nation shaken. Mm. And, and so, but what shocked me was how much he loved the church. Now, I knew he loved the church, but you've got to know this. I want to tell everybody watching, mm. he loves the church. Like he's very protective of the church. Like he's overly protective of the church. So it's like, 
Because somebody said, you know, what well, we're going to go through the tribulation. I said, okay, well, if, I've, if I'm going to marry to Adonica and I love her with all my heart, and I said, okay, baby, we're going to get married in a month from now, but I'm going to hand you over to a bunch of bullies. They're going to rape you. They're going to beat you up and break your arms, but I'll see you on the wedding day. Come on. You know that that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we are we are his, his bride, and he loves us, but he's coming back for a glorious church. So it, it, it overwhelmed me, the love that he had for the church. I mean, I knew that he wow. loved the church, but I know now, let me tell you, he loves the church, and woe betide anybody that touches his bride. Mm, mm. I'm telling you right now, you're in big trouble if you think you can touch the church. You can't, because he will protect his church. So anyway, so then suddenly the, 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 this fire tornado disappeared, and there was the earth, not like a whole ball, but like a third of it, in front of beautiful, like looking at Google Earth. I'm looking at this earth in front of me. And covering it was a gauze, like a, like a curtain, which I knew was the plague. And a hand came from the right side and just moved it off. And I heard the Lord saying, I, the Lord, your God, shall do this work. And he said, I care not who's in the White House, who's in this agency. And he was laughing. He was, God was laughing. He said, I, care, I will do this work. And so it was like a gift of faith came upon me. And then so leading up to the, you know, the arrest, because that went around the world. Everybody saw my mug shot, if you put it up, guys. So this, this picture went around the world. It was, I was, I was being arrested and people in India were seeing that face, okay? <laughs> so it's like my Al Capone face, but, but so yeah, I knew well, everything. Uh, Even right, I right, had, uh, why didn't you smile in that picture? That... You can't, because if you <laughs> smile, then they say, no, then they say you don't taking it seriously. So <laughs> actually, fact, actually fact, when I was taken in, because it was in the other county, and yeah. they just said, look, we'll get you in and out as quickly as possible, two misdemeanors, it's like two speeding tickets. You right, know. right. So, and I was actually turned in by some other preachers, which that's another story, but I forgave them. And I actually forgave the sheriff. So it's a whole crazy story that, that took place yeah. because I knew that was going to happen. My wife even walked out of the, the bathroom that morning. She said, run to the raw. And they said, the sheriff's on the fence. They've come to rescue. So I negotiated my surrender and the whole big thing. They cuffed me from the front. You know, I tried to buy the handcuffs when I got to the thing because I said, you know, I've never been arrested before. I want these as mementos, you know. So <laughs> they were laughing and I was laughing. He said, but now we need to get a, a shot. So I said, well, I need to do a serious shot. So I did that and that thing went around the world. But so anyway, so I was in and out in about an hour. I went home and I started to broadcast that night. And when I went on, the Lord said to me, now shut the church down, not because of the virus because we'd already done everything. Plus, we believe in healing and signs of wonders and miracles and we lay hands on the sick and the book of Acts. I mean, I'm a full-blown Pentecostal, radical Pentecostal. And, I, you know, uh, I'd studied everything in which I don't want to go into the whole thing. I, I, I could tell you everything, where the virus came from, how it came about, what was planned. I could tell you everything. I got all the stats, the documents, everything. But that's another story. So anyway, make a long story short, the Lord said, shut the church down now because the media stirred everything up we had 80,000 threats just on the River Church Facebook page. And then on my Instagram, my Twitter, people were going crazy. And then the phones here for days were ringing, people cursing and cussing and whatever. So we just said to everybody, we'll just go online, which we actually are online anyway. And the Bible school went online and we'll just wait till the storm blows over. And the Lord said, don't talk to any media. So I never talked to any media. I actually don't. I didn't even know what the media said. I didn't read one article. I didn't see one television program. People kept saying, you're on Fox, you're on this. I said, who cares? And I just ministered every night. And I told everybody that first night, now leave the sheriff alone. So everybody said, well, he, he, he needs to pay for it. And I said, no, leave him. He's my friend. The sheriff's my friend. And I, said, and I told my lawyers, the sheriff's going to call me. The sheriff's going to call me. They thought I was like crazy. What do you mean the sheriff's going to? I said, he's going to call me. So 30 days later, and I'm just at the house. I never left the house till this last Monday, two months solid at the house, broadcasting every night around the world, on the phone, praying with pastors, helping get food and, you know, all the stuff that we right, do. Right. So uh, 30 days into it, I get the, I get, I'm looking at the phone and there's the sheriff calling me. So I answered the phone. I said, Sheriff, <laughs> my friend, how are you doing? I said, boy, you've been in the ringer because what happened was they, le they released criminals the next day, you know, two days afterwards, and then one guy killed the person. So now he was under threats. He was under threats because he arrested a pastor. One thing you don't do in America, 
do not arrest a pastor. <laughs> that is like a no-no. I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. So within three days, everything was reversed. The, the governor declared Florida and churches as essential services, everything, and then the domino just started to fall. Now, the president this last Friday announced that churches, he wants them open immediately. And I was like, thank you, Mr. President. We wish you had done that eight weeks ago, and then I wouldn't have to go through what I went through. But anyway, so the sheriff calls me, he said, and he says, I want my friend back. I said, Sheriff, I've always been your friend. He said, can I meet with you? I said, come to the house. So he came out, met with Adonik and myself, put that picture up. So we sat and we talked. That's Sheriff Chad Cronister, the man that had me arrested. Come to my house, we had a meal, we talked, we prayed together. And, and here's what he said. He said that every day when I pray, I saw your face. Twice a day, I saw your face. And he said, um, I told my wife, I'm going to follow my heart. Because, you know, there's a lot of people in leadership and they put into circumstances by outside forces, put pressure on them. So I said to him, I said, Sheriff, look, we're going to open the church, but I need you there the first Sunday. I need you there to come, not apologize to me for arresting me. And I'm not going to apologize for getting arrested because I'll probably get arrested again because I stood for the Constitution. But I said, yeah. just tell the church, we're sorry about what happened, then we'll forgive you as a church because I've got to bring healing in the county. Now, you watch what's happening in Minnesota, what happened. Right. Those are outside people brought in to riot and loot. And that's what they want to do all across America because the whole narrative of the virus is fading now. So they want to get something going. So they want riots in every city, which is not going to happen. It's not Come going on. to happen that's in right. America. That's right. Not going to happen, right. not in 100 years. So anyway, um, he said, I will come. Well, just so you know, today, this morning, 10 o'clock, the sheriff and five deputies showed up here. We sat up in my office. We walked the field. We're getting ready now for the opening Pentecost Sunday, this Sunday. Sheriff will be here, totally secure the property, just put the pictures up. And they love what we've done, secured the whole place. And it's all super, that's really is a miracle. Yeah. Because everybody thought I was done and... Um, all the charges against me were dropped, and my record's going to be expunged. Wow, wow. Un unfortunately, the mugshot is out there because a certain evangelist made a T-shirt and put my, you know, Jonathan <laughs> made a T-shirt, put my mugshot on it, and now everybody's wearing it everywhere we go. So for the next five years, I'm going to be seeing people with my mugshot, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm actually got my own T-shirt coming out this weekend, and it has my mugshot and says, I survived COVID-19, and all I got was this lousy mugshot. Anyway, but um, yeah, yeah. so this Sunday, <laughs> we're opening, not inside the building, we're opening outside in what we call, we're calling it uh, the stand. And right. we're standing for all of our brothers and sisters around the world. They can't meet. Like, I know South Africa just passed the thing to let 50 people meet. And that's phenomenal. Great. Thank God for the breakthrough there. But in essence, there's some countries where they, they're not even talking about the church opening till the middle of next year, 2021. Mm. And so a lot of people said to me, you know, this is about a virus. I said, no, it's about stopping the gospel, especially from my standpoint, because we lay hands on the sick. They're telling you, you can't lay hands on the sick anymore. Why? Well, you get a virus. I said, we come, I'm from Africa. We, I probably laid hands on every virus known to man. I mean, come on. Seriously? Yeah, from yeah. Ebola to H1N1, come on. Come yeah, on. Yeah. Okay, so we believe in Psalm 91. How am I going to dedicate a baby with a six-foot pole? Come on. That's like right. I'm knighting them. I'm going to hold a kid. Well, how are we going to baptize people in water? I mean, no, the whole thing's ridiculous. We do communion. We either believe the Bible, we don't believe the Bible. Nobody's going to die. Nobody's going right. to die. Not one person in our church, and we have thousands of people, not one person got coronavirus. Not one person even positive. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Wow. But I did hear of a guy in Florida was eaten by an alligator, and they said he was, it was COVID-19 COVID <laughs> death. I think the alligator's name was COVID-19. COVID but so the bottom line is, and I'm being so burdened for South Africa. And I would just tell you, obviously, I understand we are from the whole, covering the whole of the continent. I've been so burdened for South Africa. I've found myself weeping over the nation many, many times, praying for breakthrough, supernatural breakthrough. 
and that God would turn the tide, you know, and which I believe is happening. And the, the devil, yes. I will say this, the devil shot his biggest shot and failed hopelessly. Come on, come especially, on. That's right. Especially That's in right. America yeah. to the start, because if America fell, the whole world, would, the lights would go out. That's right. But we, we, the Lord said, prophesy out of the valley of dry bones. Can these bones live again? So we just started nightly on television, and I told everybody, open your business, open your church. So I'm sorry for causing problems, but that's what I do. I'm a professional troublemaker for the enemy. So like this Sunday, we have 3,000 churches opening in California, 3,000 mm -hmm. opening. Mm -hmm. And they're not even allowed to have it, but they're opening. Pastors are standing everywhere. So what this field is going to be, which we're going to go nightly for 30 days, is, is a, called the stand. And we're standing for our brothers and sisters that can't worship freely. And we're not going to stop until whole nations are opening up. And I just see everybody taking fields. Can you imagine by wow. the middle of July, suddenly 50 fields across America with evangelists just having mass crusades, casting out devils, having miracles, and the same thing happening across England, and the same thing across Europe and Africa. Come on, we, wow. we're the church. Wow. Come on. We're the Come on. That's what that's Pentecost right. power right. is. You shall receive power <clears throat> after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. So when the church suddenly is like quiet, and in Canada, they said that you can't sing and you can't blow a horn, <laughs> no wind instruments. I mean, come on. <laughs> Seriously. I simply, rather, really, you know, I can't blow a vuvuzela again. You've got to be crazy. If I want a vuvuzela, I'm going to blow a vuvuzela. The South Africans will. <laughs> so, oh, Rodney. Yeah. Wow. So listen, yeah. so... I believe, you know, just like what we, what we believe in God for on this field, that a fire, a boldness, because it's really to do with boldness. Now I'm having everybody come to the field, they're signing a waiver that they will not hold us responsible for contracting anything because we don't know where they've come from and where they're going. That's right. Because they could, call, they could have caught something at McDonald's or got it at Walmart. I mean, you can't blame the church. For infection, I mean, if you understand what I'm saying, I mean, you just can't. It's impossible. You can't do that. So we're making them sign, and if they won't sign a waiver, they're not allowed on the field. And we're not allowing any news media. The media are the virus. So if, if we've told all our people, the media shop, just start shouting, virus, virus, <laughs> virus, get him out of here. So, but anyway, so it's the church, the body of Christ, standing up as one full of the fire of God. If 120 people on the day of Pentecost and the mighty rushing wind blew and the fire fell and then they went out on the streets and 3,000 were saved and 5,000 were saved, I believe coming out of this lockdown, and let me tell you why it backfired. Okay, so first of all, all the kids are home. Now parents are doing homeschooling. Then they find out they threw homeschool in three hours. What are you doing the other hours? Oh, they brainwashing them. Okay, so now they're realizing schools are, you know, they're playing with our kids. Then the university students are home. They're watching the kids study online, and they listen to university professors talk twaddle, talk rubbish. They're going, they, they, even liberals are going, that's a bunch of rubbish. Mm. I'm spending all this money to send you to a school, and they, listen to this guy talking rubbish. Then they got, they're at home. Now there's no sport. All the sports finished. All the movies, you know, I mean, they can watch Netflix or whatever, but, you know, people are searching, and they're starting to learn. They're starting to find out. Hey, something's wrong here. Something seriously is wrong here. How can, how can a supermarket open, but that business must close? How come, how come they get to open, but the church must close? So people, people are not stupid. If people thought that the people are stupid, this proves that they're not, because not everybody's buying into it. So the whole fear narrative that you're going to go out there and suddenly fall over dead. Look, people, as I tell people, you're going to die sometime. You're going to die sometime. Mm. But you're not going to die of COVID-19. Somebody said, how do you know that? Because there's only 340,000 people that have died out of 7.7 .7 billion people. Come on. Right. So you're not going to die. The chances of you dying, you have more a chance of joining the space shuttle, I mean the rocket on Saturday going to outer space, than dying of COVID-19. It's like a 0, 0.0... It's impossible. It's impossible. Mm. 
Not positive tests, deaths. Deaths. There's a 99.99% recovery rate. That's right. Okay. So I'm not saying there isn't a virus, but it's not what the media have made out. And so we've got all the pastors, they're all afraid because they don't want to be accused. But don't worry, I've already been arrested. Just tell them you're crazy like that guy Rodney. He's a South African <laughs> and he's just crazy, he got arrested. Because I'm not going to yeah. get arrested again. It's impossible to arrest me. Uh, how are they going to arrest me for? Mm. Yeah. They can't arrest me. Yeah. It's already done. That's done. So somebody has to pay a price and get a mug shot for it. And uh, But God is on the move. And the church, the church is the solution. Yeah. Not just with feeding. The church is the solution with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on. With the fire of God. Yeah. No fear. No fear. Mm, mm. No fear. You'll not fear. Psalm 91 is so prevalent. You'll God. not be afraid. You're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. You're abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. You'll say the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my That's God, right. and Him will I trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And then, of course, we close every one of our services with communion, and we've done that for years. Mm. So the power and the broken body and the blood, the blood of Jesus, you know. So I, I took this personally. I took this as a, remember when we were kids, we were kids at school. Yeah. Uh, there was always somebody that would pick on you, and you wouldn't, you know, you didn't fall for it. But the moment they said something about your mother, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That was it. Yeah. You mentioned my mother. Now, you, the guy could be like two years older than you, bigger than you. And, you know, I felt that they were insulting my heavenly father. I felt, I felt this is an insult against my heavenly father, my Lord Jesus, who died for me on the cross, shed his blood, and against the Holy Spirit. Hmm. So I took this personally. Yeah. I took it personally. And so we believe in the power of Pentecost, not just for a celebration once a year on Pentecost Sunday. Every day is Pentecost Sunday at the river. Every day. That's right. The Spunster 80 more. <laughs> we believe. No, we believe. Come and on. no one is going to die. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now, I mean, maybe Ananias and Sapphira will die. Yeah, yeah. You know. But, but, I mean, there could be. There could be. They come and they fall over dead. But there's not COVID-19. Right. Right, right. Yeah, let, me, so. let, let, me, let me ask you this question. Um, we, we, we're on the, what I believe, the tail end of this, okay? The church has come through victoriously, uh, and, and we've seen breakthrough after breakthrough uh, in, in many different ways. There have been many prophetic words and many things spoken about a move of God coming out of this. And uh, many people are talking about Pentecost Sunday being this coming Sunday now, with something really starting to happen and move. Uh, you, you've taken the stand for 30 days where you're going to do meetings nonstop for 30 days right now. What, what are you sensing for the latter part of 2020 prophetically of what God is about to do in a move of God? Talk to us about that. Well, I mean, I, for me, you know, because I'm on this 300 city tour, I've done 176 cities. So it's, it's point is me trying to make another run through because you're dealing with all the fear factor and people afraid and this one's whatever. So I just told our guys, look, we opened. We were totally cleared within three days to have church with no limitations, no social, from within three days after my arrest. So we've been fine. Plus there are churches in Florida that have never stopped meeting. So I said, look, we well, let's just run it. I was supposed to leave on a three-week annual vacation right now. But I said, let's just run it. I've been stuck in my house for eight weeks preaching every night. I said, now let me lay hands on everything that moves. And yeah. we're going to cast out devils. And I believe that people have been sitting around and they're going, you know what? We've done this long enough now. And we're going to step out. And I just see, so what I felt the Lord say that the field was a prophetic act. Right, and, right. Um, I'm laying AstroTurf right now. I don't know if they have a picture of the AstroTurf, but we got AstroTurf being laid right now. So I call it, you know, like a field of dreams. But anyway, so... It's on my Instagram. They can pull it off. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so with thousands of people coming, night after night after night, and people getting ignited as people go back and people just start taking fields, I, I feel there'll be major evangelism. Another reason why we took this as an attack on the church was because for years we've gone to retirement homes and we've led 
literally millions since 2011, over 23.5 million people saved. Millions are in retirement homes. Sadly, we couldn't go to that anymore because they closed them all. So that, that was a real irritation to me because we reach the elderly and we lead them to Christ and many were, were cut off. So I just see people being mobilized. I see whole cities being shaken. Whatever the enemy was planning is failing. Amen. And this is the hour of the church. This is not the time because everybody said, well, the Antichrist is coming in and taking over. In his dreams. Mm, mm. I have some Afrikaans words that I won't say on television <laughs> here, but in his dream. We, yeah, we, no, yeah. no, this is the hour of the church. This is the hour of the body of Christ. And we, this is the hour of the harvest of souls. And we're going to see a whole nation shaken by the hand of God. So I think, I think what people were settling into, which they thought this is church or whatever, they're going to realize, look, forget just Sunday morning. Forget just online. Just, it's people. Everything's about people. So when I arrived Tuesday morning at the church, I went around and hugged everybody for two hours. We had, we had a volunteer meeting. The first one, 500 people showed up. They did another volunteer. 800 showed up for a volunteer meeting yesterday. Like, seriously. Yeah. I'm yeah. supposed to go live tonight. They told me the auditorium's going to be packed tonight for a live service. I, I'm, I'm going live across America just on the street. People are desperate. People are hungry. They want out. Mm. They're coming out. They're getting out. The American people are getting out. Now, obviously, where you guys are, no, where well, you're in Florida, but... The rest of the people in South Africa, they're all yeah. in the freezing cold. Yeah. So uh, buy a coat, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, but yeah, we in coming into the major part of the summer. So I see, I see, I think, I think God's going to use America and um, people are going to be ignited and we're going to see more miracles, more signs, more wonders. And it's going to be not the names that everybody thought. Like, you know, Come on. Uh, right. this television ministry, this minister, because some of those are still afraid. Yeah. There's, a lot, yeah. of, there's yeah. a lot of preachers afraid. They're not even opening the churches. Seriously. Yeah. Like major, major ministries are not opening the church. They're not opening in June. They're not opening in July. They're not opening in August. So I just see just everybody rising up. And you're not going to know who's next. Is this going to be people just out there winning souls, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, and this will be the greatest harvest. Mm. That's what I see happening. Wow. wow. Yeah. Rod, uh, Sunday's coming, 31st Pentecost Sunday. What would you, all these years, you've flowed in the Holy Spirit. You, you've been igniting people year after year of your life. Uh, Jen and I have been instrumental in some of those, those days with you and those journeys with you and Adonica all over Africa, from East London, 50 days of glory, the power of God. We're coming into what I believe to be another phase of 2020. We've come through this. We, we're coming into that victory time. What would you encourage people at home watching right now? What would you encourage them with? What, what would you minister to those people right now in their homes watching this broadcast all over Africa? And uh, we, we've, had a, we've had a move of God from this set every night. And uh, I, I want there to be, I, if I can say it this way, I want to see a move of God tonight that as you pray for people tonight, lives are touched and changed all over Africa. What would your word be to those people at home? Okay, well, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm maybe a little different than some people like, you know, hey, it's Pentecost Sunday because every day is Pentecost Sunday. Like, every day is Christmas for me. Every day is resurrection. Every day is Pentecost I Right, right. You know, that's just the way I, my whole yeah. way of thinking. So I want to say to everybody that's watching, the big thing is not about being Pentecost Sunday or celebration or whatever. Has Pentecost come in you? So to ask God that he would come and baptize you afresh in the fire, that the fire would come. When the fire comes, it burns out all the dross. It burns out the fear of man that holds you back. What are other people going to say? Uh, you might lose some followers on Facebook, but who cares? It's not really a follower. If you look at the profile, it's a picture of a dog and a cat. And, mm. you know, there's not even a proper name. So it's not really was a follower. The, 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 the bottom line is Jesus had 12 people that followed him. And then the 70 and whatever. And when he went to Calvary, there was everybody left. The, 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 the way of the cross is not the way that people make it out to be 
where they just think, you know, it's, it's all going to be plain sailing. Go to the early church. Go look at every one of the apostles. Go look what happened to Stephen, who was a deacon full of faith and was, was actually stoned. Go look what happened to every one of them. Go look what happened to Paul, what took place with him. And I mean, he wrote those chapters from prison, which, you know, mm. um, I, I didn't have any time to write a chapter in one hour in prison. But what I'm saying <laughs> is everybody must let that fire, let that fire come in you yeah. and get radical. Take your phone, start calling all your friends and call all your acquaintances, people that you know. Ask them, if you die today, where would you spend eternity? And even if they don't pray with you or don't do anything, but be a witness, reach out. I'm not sure what the laws are, but I mean, people, some places are relaxing. But reach out to your neighbors, see if they need food, see if they need any help. Do whatever you can and, and just be, use this time as a time to reach out to the people around about you mm -hmm. and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ not just in handing somebody a drink or some food or whatever, but really giving them the opportunity to accept or reject Jesus because there's a lot of people that are searching. There's a lot of people asking questions. Uh, there's what, you know, here's what we're finding. A lot of people are coming back to the Lord right now because when they were little children, their parents told them that the day will come when you won't be able to go to church, where they're going to take your Bibles away. I mean, crazy stuff. So people suddenly are starting to find church. Mm. Like we've, I don't know how many new members we have. <laughs> People are joining the church. It's the craziest time to be alive, really, to be honest with you. So people are looking for something that's real. That's right. Um, they, they, and they're looking for people that have boldness and a fire that's not afraid. They're not afraid. And I want to say to every one of you that are watching right now, wherever you're watching, across Africa and across the UK and even in America, don't be afraid. Our home is in heaven. We're just passing through. And we're here on this earth to do God's purpose and God's plan. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God is going to do that through each and every individual, through every dad, through every mom, every child, from the littlest child to the oldest saint, everyone, however many days that we have left, if you have three or five years or 10 years or 30 years, if Jesus tarries, to make it count that the only thing we can take with us when we leave the earth is people. As you see what's happened in the last three months, the whole of Hollywood fell. All of the sports stars fell um, like that. Everything shut down. Mm. Uh, businesses shut down. Airlines shut down. Holiday resorts shut down. Everything comes to close. You're sitting in your house. Ultimately, what is the most important thing? Your family, your children and just some water and some food. Mm. All of the other stuff means nothing. Your collectibles, the things that you were looking forward to getting, even those certificates, the achievements that you achieved. Ultimately, all of this stuff is gonna go anyway. And only what's done for Christ will last. So when the fire comes, it'll burn out the dross. That'll and I feel that anointing even yeah, now. Come on, that, come on. That power will come mm. upon you mm. and set you ablaze. Thank that you, Jesus. you've been sitting in your house, you thought it's over. It's not over. Even for your business, God can give you a creative idea that when you come out the other side of this, it'll launch. There will be new millionaires and billionaires that will be raised up by the Spirit of God that God will bless you, give you innovation. God will give you creative ideas. You will do things a different way. You will think outside the box. And even ministers that the set way of you doing your ministry was stuck in a rut or whatever. But let me tell you, without the power of God, all you have is religion. Without the wind of heaven, without the fire of God, it's not going to shake nations. Mm. The, the, the reason why the sheriff came back to me was because he felt the power of God when he was in the church here in January. I saw the tears in his eyes. Wow, wow. So, so what I'm trying to say, all of these people in government, they need the presence of God. All these people in business, I don't care if you're a millionaire or a billionaire watching tonight, you need the presence of God. Without the presence of God, all we have is religion. And so I'm just telling you, your house can become a place where the fire of God comes upon you, your children, your grandchildren. And, and ultimately, when you realize that you are born again, you're washed in the blood of Jesus, that your home's in heaven, it doesn't matter about anything else. They can take everything away from you. 
They can even make up stories about you. They can print stuff. It doesn't really matter because a hundred years from now, no one's going to care. But only what we've done for the kingdom and how many people did we bring with us. So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, can we take another whole bunch of, I'm on a quest for a hundred million souls. So can we, can we get a whole bunch more? Let's get a whole bunch more here. So this next three, four, five months, let this be the greatest harvest of souls that the church has ever seen. Hallelujah. And then let this be the greatest time of miracles. Mm. And I'll say this, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. You will not die prematurely. Yeah. You're not going to die suddenly. Mm. You're not going to die by calamity. You'll die when your work is done. When God says it's over and you say, yes, it's over and I'm going home. Until then, you will live and you will show forth the glory of God. No one can stop you. I don't care if they came against you. No one, not an army of people could stop you mm. because the hand of God is upon your life. So therefore, you'll not fear. And so I'll just pray right now. Father, I thank you for every person watching right wherever the signal goes tonight and or through all the streams. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon each and every person. I pray first of all over every minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let the fire of heaven come upon them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Now in Jesus' name, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet even now I rebuke fear I rebuke that which has paralyzed you that's held you in a place where you even question you don't even know the way forward from this very day I thank you Lord that heaven's purpose shall be made manifest in the life of every man woman boy and girl that an army of people are being raised up with signs and wonders and miracles that will march to the land we see South Africa shaken. South Africa, it's not the end. God will sweep the land. And they will rock our storm. What the enemy planned will fail utterly and shall come to nothing. And what shall emerge shall be the glorious church. And from Cape Town to Bite Bridge, from coast to coast, will be shaken. Every tribe and every tongue, every plan of the wicked is brought low. And Father, for the rest of Africa, everywhere from Zimbabwe to Zambia, yes. or to Mozambique, Malawi, yes. to Namibia, to Angola, rolling up through the Congo, right up into Kenya, Uganda, everywhere to Cairo. I thank you for the fire of God that will sweep up and down the banks in the Nile River and the glory of God shall be made manifest. Thank you for the tens of millions, tens of millions of believers that are watching even now, that the fire comes in their homes even now. Mamas rising up, grandmothers grabbing a hold of it. Lord, this might not look the way it's looked before where people even had a title, but out of nowhere, Hallelujah. they shall rise up and they shall march through the land. Miracles will take place. People yes. will be healed of every kind of disease. Yes. It yes. shall take place. And even the dead shall be raised. Thank you, and we Jesus. thank you for it. Hallelujah. Across Europe, even now, where they thought that it was finished and done. Whole nations shall be shaken. Every plan of the wicked Jesus. shall be brought to naught. Across the United Kingdom, the fire of heaven In falls Jesus from... Lands end to John O'Gross and every town in between. Mm -hmm. And then across North and Central and South America and across Asia and Australia and New Zealand. Father, I thank you for the church. Triumphant shall yes, stand yes. with a holy boldness coming out of this lockdown. They shall not be locked down anymore. Hallelujah. But there will be a rising up with power Hallelujah. and the anointing. And I thank you for it. That's yes. it right now. That's the fire That's of God for you right now. Hallelujah. Robo. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name that's above every name. Stir up. Stir up the gift that was given you. Some even years ago by the laying on of hands. Stir it up. You shall not care what anyone shall say. But you shall care only what heaven says. Blessing and honor
Thank you, Jesus. Now listen. The signal is back good and strong. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? Thank you, Lord. I want, right on, you're still there with me. Okay? Is, is Dr. Rodney with me still? I'm here. Okay. Yeah. This, this is what I feel. There, there, there was a technical glitch through the pipes all the way to Africa while you were praying in the latter part of that prayer. The fire of God was moving. Mm. I want us right now to get ready, South Africa. This is what I want you to do. I want you to share the Facebook feed as quick as you can right now. Because I want everyone to be connected. If you're in your home right now, we, we've got a matter of minutes left. But this is what I feel. The fire of God is going to come into our homes. The fire of God is going to hit Africa as Dr. Rodney prays like Hallelujah. never before. Hallelujah. And we're going to go into a moment. We're going to go into a time right now of just a release of His fire in our homes again. But Rod, this is what I felt. This is what I felt so strongly while you were praying. They are ministers. They are men and women of God that need a fresh touch of His Hallelujah. fire on their life tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I felt, Nikki, I felt, Lillian, what, what I need to ask you to do as a man and a woman of God, if you are a, a man of God, if you're a woman of God, full time in the ministry, I'm going to ask you, when Dr. Rodney starts to pray, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and to raise both hands towards heaven. I want you to get a fresh baptism of fire on your life tonight. There is coming a supernatural release on your life tonight. This is going to be a mass baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire on your life all across Africa right now. That's why I said let's go to music and let's hold it because I believe that God is about to do something powerful tonight across Africa across Africa. So I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready right now in your homes. But I want you to share the feed quickly. Why don't you share the feed as many of you as can on your Facebook, on your social media. Tell your friends. Tell everyone to, to, to get it. Just quickly. You say, I've already shared the feed. Share the feed again. Do it as, as quick as you can. All right? As quick as you can. Let's get a mass movement of people all across the nations of Africa, the UK, and the Americas, and every one of you in your living room, your hospital bed, your prison cell, wherever you are watching from, let's have a mass baptism of the fire of God tonight. Maybe you're there and you say, well, I'm not a man and woman of God. I, I, I want to stand as well. Yes. Then I want you to stand. Every night we've said, yes. kneel, sit, whatever. But tonight I feel... We need stand to stand. And we need to stand for a, for a time in the presence yes. of the Lord because there was fire in Dr. Yes. Rodney Praise as God. he prayed that prayer and the signal started to break up. And I'm believing for that same fire Amen. now to come across. And so, Rod, Amen. I'm going to hand back to you. and I want you to pray and minister, prophesy, speak to the men of God. 
all across the nations of South Africa and all over Africa as God leads. Back to you. Okay, so everything was about a point of contact. Mm. And as uh, Pastor Andre said, if you stay and lift your hands, that's being obedient. Mm. So you just go ahead and do that right now. We're going to pray. Father, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, Jesus, just like on the day of Pentecost, when they were gathered in that upper room in one accord in one place, 120 of them that had been there waiting for the coming of the Holy Ghost, that even now, as just people are spread out in their homes, into nations of the earth, as they stand humbly before you with hands raised, let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon them now, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Out of the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, from the top of your head, there it is right now. In the Brokopra Hande Rike, Raashto Prapaya, Brombori, Kele Supra, Ranganjo, Brefun de la Saya, for our Braganje, Brika, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They appeared in them cloven tongues, like as a fire upon them now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God go through them. Burn out all the dross. Burn out the fear of man. Every sickness and disease, it goes now. And a holy boldness comes upon them. Shake off everything that's held you back. Even that which is paralyze you during lockdown. All fear goes right now. Depression goes. Oppression goes. Bondages go. Addictions go in the name of Jesus. Hope comes. Life comes in the name of Jesus like a mighty rushing wind. There it is. There it is right now. There it is right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's several ministers watching that you've almost gave up and said it's finished, it's over. But the Lord says it's just beginning. Your ministry is just beginning. Grab a hold of that which the Spirit of God is doing even now. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Right now, the power of God's coming upon people. You can feel it in your hands, some upon your mouth. God says, I'm anointing your mouth. Just like when the angel took a coal from me off the altar and placed it on the prophet's lips, that you will speak with a new boldness and with a new authority. He said, it's not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. It's not my word like a fire. Father, I thank you even now for that anointing like liquid oil that's going right from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. There it is. In Jesus' name. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Like a mighty rushing. Father, just like what happened 10 weeks ago when that fire came into my room, let that same fire fill rooms right now. Let that same fire of the Holy Ghost fill houses right now upon little children, teenagers even now. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And Lord, I thank you that miracles, signs and wonders shall be made manifest. Not just in the area of healing, not just in the area of sickness and disease, but Lord, where devils are loosed off of people, people that have been even gone insane will be set free, just like the man at Gadara. Father, people that have been locked down and paralyzed through fear, even now, the spirit of witchcraft is being broken, yes. like scales oh, falling Jesus. off yes. of people. Yes. The, the, the witchcraft that's yes. been exercised against individuals. People are seeing clearly right now that which has been oppressing you, that which has been binding you right now. We break that curse. We send the curse back to its place of origin in the name of Jesus. From this very moment, the plague is being stayed from off the land. And I take authority over the devil that's trying to destroy South Africa from this very night. Your power is broken. You are rendered powerless and ineffective in the name of Jesus. Total havoc is wreaked in the camp of the wicked even now. Pull the wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots. Father, even as they're trying to dig a ditch for your people, they've fallen at themselves. Let the church arise with great boldness and signs and wonders in the land in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it. And that goes for the rest of Africa. 
Africa. Whole nations shaken. Africa, this shall not be your worst hour, but this shall be your finest hour. Father, we thank you for it. And we pray a blessing upon Africa in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, pour out the wine. Pour out the new wine. Hallelujah. Fill them with your joy. Fill them to overflowing. Thank you, Lord. Let yeah. the cup run yeah. over. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I know that for some it's been a very serious moment. But even as they drink of the new wine, let them get drunk tonight. <laughs> let them get drunk. Let them get drunk, Lord, of that new wine that comes from heaven. The new wine that comes from the grapes that's been freshly squeezed mm. that come from the vineyard of God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank and they'll be Jesus. high for months on end. <laughs> they won't wake up tomorrow morning, bubble us. No hangover. No hangover. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your joy, your joy, yeah. your joy, yeah. your joy. Fill rooms with joy right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, 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 walking and leaping and praising God, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it right now. That's it right now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't give any vain. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Filling your people to overflowing. Fill them to overflowing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Depression is going. It's, it's going right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Donkey. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful Jesus. <laughs> Wonderful Lord Jesus. Wonderful Lord Jesus. Wonderful Lord Jesus. Wonderful Savior. The baptized and the Holy Ghost and fire. The peace that you give us. The world can't take it away because they couldn't find it. The joy that you give us, the world can't take it away. They can take away our car, they can take away our house, but they can't take away your joy. This is eternal joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. They can take our name, they can take our reputation, but they can't take our joy. Thank you, Lord. Donkey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Cup running over. Cup running over. Your cup. Your cup running over. Yes. Father, fill every cup to the brim. Let it spill over into the saucer. Let it splash onto the table. Let it mess up the tablecloth. Let it run off the table. Mess up the whole kitchen, Lord. Thank you. Your word says, the psalmist said, you anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just, just wait. Just wait now. Just wait. Just wait. That's the power of God right now. People are being healed all over the network right now. That's right. That's right. Cancer is going. Blood disease is going. Blood disorders. Kidney problems are going. Problems in your mouth, in your teeth. Your gums are being healed right now. Problems in the eyesight. Problems in the ears. Right now. Thank you, Lord. In the spine, the neck, the back, right through the central nervous system. Lungs are being healed even now. Thank you, Lord. People are being healed of HIV AIDS. Thank you. Every virus, every virus. Corona. Father, I thank you. And the fear of it. The fear of it. Even those that have somehow attested positive, <laughs> tomorrow they will be negative. Father, we thank you for it. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No fear. No more fear. No more fear. And make a way for every person. They don't know where the finance is coming, but you'll make a way for them. Even the food on the table. Even if angels have to come and bring the food to the house. That you'll make a way. Father, we thank you. You look after your people. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Rodney, I I want you just to stay with us a few more moments. The power of God is like, moving. I'm like just wrapped in a total peace right now. I'm just sitting here. We, we, in a total peace. We, we, we've got a, about 17 minutes left of the broadcast. You know, this is what's carried me in these past 10 weeks. Yeah. And on the one side, you're weeping with people because you, you laugh with those that laugh, weep with those that weep. You're praying for people, compassion. I mean, I would just sit and tears just come. Even when I sit down to pray over the food, yeah. and then I pray and say, now, Lord, help my brothers and sisters that have nothing to eat today. And then I just end up weeping, you know. But So you, you go between that, but it's like the hand of God is just sustaining you. And I want, I want to pray for Ralph. Dietria, but lungs on you. So. Pastor Nikki and Lillian. Yeah, you know, I'm praying for your family. The Lord said, I will take care of your children. I will take care of your kids. Mm. Hallelujah. I will look after the boys, and I'll be about them as a fire. Mm. So, Father, I just thank you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And a peace even now. Yeah. Because I know what it's like for parents and your kids in one place and you another place, and especially upon you, dear lady. Yeah, Lilia. So, Lord, mm. fill it with joy unspeakable. Mm. <laughs> to overflowing. In Jesus' name, that that whole burden is lifted now. God almost. And I thank you for your hand upon the boys. And upon everything that they do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Rodney, I know Thank this. I, I know this is unplanned. But, but, but so was my arrest. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I want to ask you if it's possible if, if your team can give you a, a cup and the bread and if you would lead South Africa yeah. in the can breaking they, of bread. Somebody bring me communion. Bring me one of the communion things quickly. They'll bring it to me. Okay. And then when you've got that, I, I want you to, to lead. We, we break bread every night together across the network. We've been doing this now 72 days today. And I want you to lead all of our great partners and everyone around the world with the breaking of bread. As soon as you've got that ready, you just flow as God leads yeah, you. Yeah, they're coming now with it. Thank you, You know, Jesus. one of the things that the Lord told me to do, and I've been doing this for many years, was I, I begin to close our Sunday services with communion because I said to the Lord, how do I protect the people from what's going on in the air, pollutions in the air and stuff. How do I protect them from the food that's corrupted through the GMOs and stuff like that? And then the water and, and just everything. How do I protect them from travel? Uh, you know, and, and basically, I started this back years ago. We had, a, we had a whole scare with the Zika virus, if you remember the Zika. They actually... Have another drink there. Have another drink. They know how drunk you are, but um, yeah, just have, just drink everything you can. Just drink it all. Don't on a detafel. Anyway, so so there was that whole Zika scare, and they actually declared our county an emergency for Zika. And I remember one Sunday, I stood in the pulpit and took authority of it, and we never saw any of it. That actually ordered. Uh, 240,000 hazmat suits for Dallas Fort Worth. This was going to go through America. And suddenly, like that, Zika was gone. And so I then, the Lord said, Lord, how do I protect the people? He said, have communion. Every Sunday when you close the Sunday service, the last thing you do is communion. So I'm holding in my hand 
this wafer that represents the body that was broken, and then the cup, which is the juice or representing the blood. Okay. So that what happened 2,000 years ago, first of all, what happened at the Passover, they couldn't leave Egypt until they had the lamb in them and the blood over them. And so they were looking forward to the coming one day of, of the Messiah that would come. We don't look forward to the coming of Messiah because he already came. We look back to the first Passover that they put the blood on the doorpost and lintels. They could not leave Egypt until they had the lamb in them and the blood over them. And, they, and as they ate of the lamb, they were quickened. Two and a half million people were quickened. They come out of 400 years of slavery. How are you going to leave and go to the promised land if you're blind and you're crippled? So it was the greatest healing and miracle service took place. Maybe if you divided them into eight per family, 300,000 lambs, they were brifles. People smelt there was freedom in the air. And so when Jesus took <laughs> of the, the Last Supper, as they called it, and he broke of the bread and he, and he took the cup. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bowed our sicknesses. One Peter 2, 24, who his own self bow our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. That today as we hold this bread in our hand, we look back at what happened at Calvary. He said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show my death till I come. So this is a meal of promise that we're eating today, but we know that he's coming soon. But even as we take this bread, that as you put this bread in your mouth, that the healing power of God will go through your body. Every muscle, every tissue, every sinew, every cell. And the Lord will sustain you and you will not die prematurely. You will not die before your time. Your life will not be cut, cut off. And then when you take of the cup, the blood that washes us clean from all sin, from guilt, from shame, from anything in the past, that we stand before him free, no guilt, no condemnation, that the blood washes us whiter than snow. And the blood seals us till the day of redemption. And the blood protects us that the devil cannot touch us. He cannot touch you because of the blood. Right. He can't touch your house. He can't touch right. your vehicles. He can't touch your children. He cannot touch your grandchildren. He can't even touch your dog. Everything about you, the blood of Jesus, the blood protects you. The Father, we pray over these and everyone partaking today. As we take of this bread, I pray let healing power flow into the life of each and every person. Mm. Sustain them supernaturally, even those that needed to see a doctor, but now they see Dr. Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that you heal. I am the Lord that healeth you. And you heal them now. We receive now by faith. Go ahead and partake. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the quickening that takes place even now by your mighty hand. Thank you, Lord. I just, I feel that anointing so strong. <laughs> Woo, kapari stupra. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And now the cup. Thank you for the blood that washes us clean, that protects us that seals us, the blood that keeps us pure and holy. Thank you. Thank you we drink now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to take a moment <coughs> speak to you all at home tonight 
I feel so strong. We have to sow a seed of revival. Amen. It has to be a seed of revival tonight. We've got a matter of minutes left. I want you now to hashtag revival and get your seed in the ground. But this is what I want you to do. Dr. Rodney and Adonica have led a move of God around the world in revival. They have the stand coming up. I want you to log on to their website, wherever you are around the world. And I want you to sow a seed into revival at revival.com. I want you to sow a seed into revival.com tonight. If you have been blessed, every night we've done this. We've, we've been obedient every night. I want you to go and I want you to log on. You say, I, I can't log on to that website. I, I don't know how. If, you, want, if you, you have a way, you can sow the seed into our bank account as normal. We will pass it on. Earmarket. Just earmark it, revival. Hashtag revival. But the best way and the easiest way is to sow the seed straight into revival.com. I want you to go to that website right now, wherever you are around the world. I want you to get a seed of revival in the ground now in Jesus' name. Jesus. There is something, I, I believe, Nikki, I believe this week God is setting us aside, Rod. Right? God is preparing us for a great move of revival like never before is going to birth out of this coronavirus. Hallelujah. There is going to come a touch of God. I'm telling you, the end days, the last period of this year, the last of 2020, I'm talking. There is going to be a mighty move of God. Souls like never before. And we need to get seed in the ground in revival. And there's no better way than to sow seed into revival. Amen. Amen. Therefore, I want you to sow tonight's offering and tonight's seed into Dr. Rodney and Adonica Howard Brown's ministry, revival.com. And I want you to put the seed in the ground. Rod, I'm going to ask you to pray. We've got a matter of a minute or two. I want you to pray for every seed that's coming for revival today. Would you do that? Thank you, Father, thank you. Just like the ravens brought the prophet bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. Yes. Send ravens. Send the supernatural supply to every home now. Yes. Miracles in the morning. When they wake up tomorrow morning, there'll be a miracle in the morning. Miracle at breakfast. Miracle at noonday. Yes. Miracle in the afternoon, Ramos, miracle in the evening. Yeah. Midnight miracles, let them happen. Keep them birds flying, Lord. Keep them ravens coming. Mm. Flap, flap, flap. Yeah. I hear the flap, flap, flapping of the raven's wings bringing in the supernatural provision yes. that there shall be no lack in the house of the righteous. Yeah. Thank you that your word says the eyes of the Lord over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. You said before we call, you'll answer. And while we are yet speaking, you will hear. I thank you. Provision yes. shall be in your house. Yes. Now bless them now. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get online, revival.com forward slash giving. You can go to their giving area of revival.com. Sow a seed. Be obedient. The links are on our Facebook page. If you want to be able to link, just sow. Let's get a seed of revival in the ground on this Thursday night. Now, Dr. Rodney and Adonica and The Stand will be coming to you on Faith Broadcasting Network live every night starting on Sunday night at midnight across Africa. It works with the time zone, so we'll be bringing that on this channel live at midnight every night. All right, and we'll be running until he's completed, midnight till, what, what's it going to be, Rod? Two, three hours every night. Now, what, what, you, you're joining us, what, at 6 o'clock? 6 p.m., oh, yeah. Yeah, so we go to 9.30, so three and a half hours. Three so. and a half hours. from yeah. So it'll be from midnight till 3.30 a.m. Central African time. No, we'll right? keep them awake. You'll keep them awake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to be bringing you right here on Faith Broadcasting Network the power of the stand starting on Sunday night. All right, we'll tell you more about it in the week as we go with the live program tomorrow night as well. But it will be The Stand coming to you on Faith Broadcasting Network from midnight until 3.30 a.m. every single night. 
That's 30 nights, right? Is that right? 30 nights, non-stop. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really... I've said we'll go, the, the you know, the first eight days, but it's going to be the whole month of June. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got nowhere to go. <laughs> OK. So, you know, somebody said, are you going to go on a holiday? I said, where? <laughs> you know, so... Well, you know, <laughs> every marble and paper people and cast out devils and lay hands on the sick, you know, so... Well, it's going to be good to be joining forces with you. And uh, don't forget, download the new Faith Now app as well. We'll be carrying it on the Faith Now app as well. And uh, we want to encourage you, get online, get the Faith Now app, because the sessions will then be available on the app the day after as well if you miss the live broadcast, okay? So really get online with the Faith Now app. And you can do that all at the App Store. Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, thank you. Thank well you, done. thank you. A final closing word, less than two minutes, and we're out of here. Well, just so you know, I mean, we love you guys. Um, Africa is so close to my heart. Um, there's nothing <laughs> like Africa. Nothing so, like Africa. Well, thank we love you. love you very much. Thank you. Thank you Pray so much. You. We love yeah. you. We love you and Adonica so much as well. Africa prays for you, and Africa tonight are sowing their seed into the, the stand and revival.com. So we love you and appreciate you. All of you at home, it's been a great night. Hasn't it been oh, awesome? What a night. What a night. What a night. Oh, thank and you, uh, we just thank you so, so much. To all of you that viewed, we'll be back with you tomorrow night, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's going to be absolutely amazing, and we'll tell you about the weekend's lineup on the live broadcasting. Matt, come on, take us out of here. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Don't forget the repeat broadcast tonight at midnight. God bless you. Shalom.